Hi friends, welcome back to USMLE team. Today's topic is apnea in pediatric patients. This is very important and uh, very important for our pediatricians also. So before starting this, I would request you to subscribe to our channel and please tell your friends to subscribe. You can tell them through the Facebook, email or Twitter account. We need your subscription, we need your support, we need your love. Okay guys, let me start with this without wasting much time. Apnea is a complete cessation of breath, breathing for 20 seconds or longer and tend to be accompanied by bradycardia that is a heart rate lower than 100 and hypoxemia. So this is usually you see in the um, floors, uh, mother will be crying and mother will uh, tell you that, that suddenly I saw baby stop breathing, he was turning blue, blah blah blah, okay. So you have to be very cautious about this and this is very important and you should take a very important steps. Apnea can be obstructive, that is the inspiratory efforts may present or central, that is the inspiratory efforts absent. In premature neonates, apnea tends to be mixed with 40 to 65 percent of episodes central and 10 to 35 percent obstructive. The incidence of apnea increases with a decreasing gestational age and initially all the infants with a gestational age of less than 28 weeks will have at least one apneic episode. Apnea tends to begin within one to two days of birth and tend to resolve by 37 week Okay, however, uh, in fact, less than 28 weeks at birth can have persistent apneic episodes beyond the term gestation. There is no correlation between apnea of prematurity and SIDS. Okay, uh, monitoring and the evaluation. This is very important. Monitoring. Uh, in fact, less than 35 weeks of PMA should be monitored for apneic episodes for at least one week after birth. Okay, monitoring should continue until no significant apneic episodes are noted for 5 to 7 days. Remember, this is very very important. Uh, evaluation. Uh, further evaluation should be strongly considered after the first apneic episode, especially if the patient is a term or more than 7 day old or if increase in the uh, apneic episodes from the patient's baseline may include ABG, CBC, ABG is very important guys, ABG is very important, uh, CBC, glucose, serum ionized calcium, electrolytes, a plus or minus limited or a full sepsis evaluation. Okay, now let's move on to the differential diagnosis. Um, in a differential diagnosis, like you should consider of infection if history of feeding intolerance, temperature instability and lethargy. Okay. Uh, evaluation limited or a full sepsis evaluation F viral cultures or a rapid RSV respiratory essential virus if signs and symptoms are suggestive initiate broad spectrum ant antibiotics until the culture results are available okay you should not wait for uh, culture reports because it will take uh, nearly 48 to 72 hours that's why you should start with the antibiotics uh, temperature instability if a uh, recent changes in the patient's environment uh, such as a weaning to an open crib, check temperature probes if applicable. Metabolic disorders look for accompanying jitteriness, poor feeding, lethargy or irritability. Check electrolytes, especially glucose and serum ionized calcium plus or minus ammonia or lactate if indicated. Medications, maternal history of drug use, check urine drug screen, medications given during the labor, serum, magnesium label, narcotics administered to a patient. Okay, medications uh, over impaired oxygenation. Uh, if a recent change in the respiratory support or if a patient has accompanying a cyanosis, a respiratory distress or a tachypnea, consider impaired oxygenation. Check ABG and do chest x-ray. Place on continuous oximometry monitoring and consider increase in the respiratory support. Intracranial pathology. If, uh, sorry, neurological examination should be completed on any patient with apnea. Remember, very important. In any patient of apnea, do neurological examination. If abnormal exam or accompanying seizure, obtain head imaging, usually cranial ultrasound. In neurology consult, consult should be strongly considered if any patient with abnormal neurological exam or seizures are there. Uh, anemia, anemia itself does not cause apnea. Whether PRBC transfusion decreases the frequency of anemia is controversial. Post anesthesia. Premature infants can have increased apnea for days after general anesthesia. 
can occur up to 50 to 60 week PMA. Feeding hypoxemia, desaturation and bradycardia associated with the feeding can occur in infants during nipple feeding. Uh, tends to resolve by 44 to 50, 54 week of PMA. May use supplemental oxygen with the feeds and placing of a nipple feeds and in extreme cases gavage feeding until the infant is more mature. Congenital hypoventilation syndrome. Congenital hypoventilation syndrome is an uncommon disorder with hypoventilation and apnea during sleep. No increased effort to breathe even with a severe hypoxia and hypercarbia. And that's increase in the um, carbon dioxide in the body. Uh, blood. A cranial imaging tends to be normal though hearing screen may be abnormal. Xanthine that is a caffeine not typically effective and most infants require prolonged mechanical ventilation and tracheostomy. Okay, how do you manage? Very important. Initial management. Most infants respond to tactile stimulations. Just take the baby, okay, pinch mildly so that they will cry and they, the apnea stops, okay. At the back or at the arms or the feet or the thighs, whichever is convenient. If mechanical ventilation required, use same FiO2 as prior to episode to avoid hyperoxia. Evaluate for the cause of airway obstruction secretions in ETT or NCPAP and CPAP prongs or extreme flexion or extension of the neck. Xanthines. CN stimulate to increase the medullary respiratory sentence sensitivity to, sorry, sensitivity to, to carbon dioxide that stimulates the, stimulates the central respiratory drive. Um, increase resting pharyngeal muscle tone, decrease REM sleep, strengthens diaphragmatic contraction, caffeine citrate is often used, neonates PO, uh, IV loading dose is 20 milligram dose is not important for a USMLE board examination even for a step 3 dose is never important okay you no need to remember the dose but if you are working as an uh, you want to be a pediatrician you just can read this loading dose of 20 milligram per kg um, maintenance dose of uh, 5 milligram per kg per day consider bolus of 10 milligram per kg with an increase in the maintenance of the dose by 20 percent if apnea continues currently no evidence for monitoring caffeine levels caffeine uh, generally stopped at uh, 34 to 36 hours of PMA. If uh, no apneic spells have occurred for 5 to 7 days, keep in mind that caffeine can have an effect for up to 1 week after the discontinuation. And patients should be monitored for further apneic spells until 5 to 7 days after this period. This is very important. We have then um, NCPAP. Uh, NCPAP uh, decreases pharyngeal collapse and decreases obstructive apnea. Initiate NCPAP at 5 to 7 cm of water and increase in the increments of 1 to 2 cm to a maximum of 8 to 10 cm of H2O. Uh, pharyngeal muscle control improves at uh, 32 to 34 weeks of PMA. Mechanical ventilation sometimes required if other interventions above are unsuccessful. Use the lowest possible setting to avoid lung injury. So this is a basic idea about the apnea and how to manage and in which, in which condition you see the apnea. Okay. Thank you so much for watching my video on uh, apnea in pediatrics. Thank you so much.